Hey, homeschoolers, we know we aren't weird and unsocialized as a popular blog implies, but you might wonder if we are weirder than kids in public school. I was relieved when my oldest son, after having been in a public high school for a few weeks, told me that he thought that the public school kids were just as weird as homeschoolers. We know that our kids can benefit from having good social skills. Good social skills mean that our kids are going to be less likely to have an addictive behavior like a video game dependence. We know that kids who do have problematic video gaming habits are typically those who have poor social skills. Having good social skills means that our kids are likely to have less anxiety, a better mood, and we know that good social skills can lead to future career and relationship success. So social skills are important. It is my perspective that kids should be taught directly about social skills. Yes, social skills are more caught than taught, but not every child catches these skills. And certainly, I would say most children don't catch every skill and can benefit from direct teaching. I am going to be teaching how to help your kids make and keep friends at the Cincinnati Great Homeschool Convention this week. I would love to have you join me. If you aren't already signed up, you can go to greathomeschoolconventions.com. But today, I have three reasons why we should include social skills in our regular homeschool curriculum and three ways that we can teach it. First, one reason why I believe that we should teach social skills directly is because our homeschoolers are protected from the bullying in school. And so they don't learn that some behaviors are socially unacceptable. That is honestly the foremost reason I wanted to homeschool my kids after just believing that I had to accept God's call on my life because I was very much bullied as an elementary student and middle schooler. I learned, for example, that my homemade clothing was not acceptable. And I know that some homeschoolers will say, but that's just too bad. Um, You know, people just need to accept that our clothing doesn't fit the latest trends or, or our hairstyles or even some of our behaviors. But when we become adults, when our kids graduate from high school, They will still have to fit in in a job. They will want to meet someone to share their lives with. And if they don't learn that some things about that we are doing, some ways that we are dressing, some ways that we are behaving aren't socially acceptable in our current culture, then they can struggle unnecessarily. Um, I changed my clothing when I was a middle schooler and it helped me a great deal. The homeschool community as a whole is very accepting of wide variations in appearance and behavior. I love that. And it is a huge blessing to my family. It's been a blessing to so many homeschooling families over the years. And I am not advocating that we change that in any way, shape, or form. However, we do want to prepare our kids for a community that won't be quite as accepting. I also learned as a child, especially once I got into those middle school years, that my teacher-pleasing behaviors weren't socially acceptable. When I found myself in a situation where the teacher was constantly praising me and holding me up as an example to the other kids, I learned that that didn't win me any friends (laughs) in school. Now, I wasn't completely responsible for that. Uh, My teachers made, I think, a mistake in using me as a standard in many situations for the other kids. Uh, Wasn't going to help my social situation. However, 
I did learn as a result of being in school that I didn't want to present myself as being superior and a goody two shoes. And so our kids can learn these things by being directly taught them. So we want to have a special time set aside for teaching social rules as they're currently taught in our culture, whatever they are. The second reason that I think our kids can benefit from direct teaching about social skills is because many of them have special needs. Kids who are on the spectrum may need concrete explanations for why we do certain things in a social setting. One of the things that I was surprised to learn was that many kids need to be taught people like it when you say hello to them. That probably seems obvious to you as it does to me, but kids, when they hear this very concretely stated, they can grasp it and understand that it will make people happy. It will make people like them when they say hi. That is just one example. Kids with special needs also need more practice and more feedback. That is why they aren't just picking up on these social skills from their day-to-day -day lives. They need to have the opportunity to do it over and over again and get feedback from other people about how they are doing. Gifted kids also, because they often assume that others are just like them, may have some learning to do in the context of social skills. My oldest son was in that category, and because he loved trivia and was all about it, he assumed that his other friends who went to a traditional school were the same way. And so I would find him playing Alex Trebek to his friends, and, and he, he was asking them all of these trivia questions, and you could just see that they were so bored and put off by this behavior, as we would be as adults. I also met a young man who was a gifted student, but he had not learned that it wasn't socially acceptable to announce to people that he barely knew, I'm a genius. <laughs> so we want to teach our kids directly. If you have a child who has ADHD or ADD tendencies, these kids tend to be in their own world. They're in their heads more than other people are. Uh, they're not paying attention because they're, if they have more of the hyperactivity component, they're moving around a lot and they aren't paying attention to social cues. And so they can benefit from direct teaching as well. And then the third reason I believe all homeschoolers can benefit from direct teaching about social skills is that learning step-by-step -step instructions for any anxiety-provoking situation, especially social skills, can help kids feel more confident. It can reduce their anxiety. Um, so things like making friends. How do I make friends? It's a complex skill, and it might seem obvious to some of us as parents, especially if we are extroverts. It's like, well, yeah, of course, I know how to make friends. And, and if it comes naturally to us, we may not even, though, know how to break it down into step by step for someone who doesn't, it doesn't come naturally for. So things also like joining a group. If you see a group of people and you would like to join their conversation, how do you do that? If you give your kids these step-by-step -step sequences for these complex skills, they will grow in their confidence. They will be more willing to do them, to practice them, and to have better relationships. So those are the three reasons that I think it is important to teach our kids specifically how to develop these social skills. Okay, so the first reason, just to review, is because if we have our kids in a protected space, which I'm all about, then they may need some help learning what 
isn't socially acceptable outside of the homeschooling community. And then number two is that kids with special needs can really benefit from specific teaching so that they can have more time to practice and get more feedback. And then number three is that learning step-by-step instructions for any child will reduce anxiety and help them grow in confidence. So if I've convinced you that you should take time to teach your kids social skills, regardless of which kids you have in your family, you may be wondering, how do I teach them though? That was definitely something I was wondering. And the first step is you have to have a plan. I can tell you, even as a psychologist, that having good intentions, even having the knowledge as I had, it won't happen in your homeschool without a plan. I have been unable to find good materials that would map out step by step for me how to teach these skills. And so even with my own kids, it was more just along the way that I would talk to my kids about what was and wasn't socially acceptable, how to develop these particular social skills. So you want to have a plan, but it can be challenging to come up with one. Uh, You might have to do a lot of research and figure out exactly which skills you want to teach and how to teach them. But the second piece of advice I have for you about teaching social skills in your homeschool is that I advise you to teach it in a family or a group setting. Our kids are not going to learn social skills independently. We can't get the social skills curriculum and hand it to junior and say, okay, go off to your room and learn these social skills. (laughs) That isn't going to work as much as it might save our sanity to have that as an option. The other reason that we don't want to do that is because kids whose social skills are lagging generally, or they're just our specific social skills that are lagging, are already feeling insecure about that. And if we call them out and say, okay, it's time for your social skills training, that will only make things worse. The very best way for Anyone, including our homeschooled kids, to learn social skills is within a social setting. If you have multiple children, then you can definitely learn these things in a family. However, in addition to that, I recommend having some kind of a group setting for your kids to learn and practice these skills in. It is invaluable to have other kids for your children to practice on, especially people who are safe, uh, people who share your values that you know the parents, you can trust the parents to uh, respond to any problems that come up. Uh, That has been a huge blessing for my particular family. I actually had a situation when my kids were in a PE class that was for homeschoolers where one of my kids was bullying another kid and the father of this young man called my husband and they worked it out (laughs) and my child was not bullying that young man anymore. So it is just an invaluable, I know I have said that before, but it is, it is invaluable to have that kind of experience, something that you are unlikely to get in a traditional or a public school. So if you would like your kids to really develop these social skills that you're going to directly teach them, I encourage you to start a co-op. I started a co-op, as I've mentioned before, multiple times in this podcast with a group of people who were initially just acquaintances of mine. I did not know them well. I had met them at a PE, at that very same PE class. Uh, I believe I met one of them through a play group that I was in for my younger kids. But I asked them if they would be interested in doing a home-based co-op just with a few of us families. There were four of us in in the co-op initially, and my kids made 
lifelong friends in that group. And the moms made friends because this was not a learning center. It wasn't a drop-off co-op. We stayed and worked on our own relationships and our own social skills and had so much fun. And we took vacations together over the years. And um, I am just so grateful for that experience. And my kids would say that that was the very best part of their homeschooling. So many social skills were learned and practiced in that context. So I highly commend that to you. The next tip I have for you to teach social skills to your homeschoolers is to use multiple modalities to teach. When it comes to social skills, just having your child read a book about social skills is probably not going to be that valuable for many of your learners. Reading is great. I love reading, but I think listening is a fantastic way of um, learning about social skills, watching, and then, of course, practicing. Within a multi-modality approach, I believe that stories can be so powerful. We think about stories and whether those stories are in book form or in movie form, and we realize how many social skills are actually modeled for us in those stories, both good behaviors and bad behaviors, and we realize how effective this can be in teaching our kids social skills. So when it comes to teaching social skills and needing a plan and wanting to teach in a social setting and also teaching with multiple modalities, I had a problem. I have long been wanting to teach homeschoolers how to teach their children social and emotional skills, as I talked about in the last episode, and I didn't have materials that I could recommend to them. What I found were worksheets, things that were designed to be used in a traditional classroom of 25 children that needed to be occupied for an hour. And yes, I did find some really wonderful activities, but I knew that paired with a worksheet and a traditional lecture on social skills that it was not going to be effective. I had such success in teaching kids about language arts using a story-based approach that I knew I wanted to have a story-based approach to the teaching of social and emotional skills. And so that led me to develop the concept of training aliens. The idea that I had was that aliens, three siblings, would be sent to space camp and the NASA people decided that in order to determine if aliens could coexist with us socially, that they would ask attendees at space camp, the campers themselves, to help teach aliens social and emotional skills as part of a test program. So the curriculum would be designed for K through eight students. You could use it with younger students who listen in and participate as much as they are able to, older students who would be asked to help lead the curriculum and train possibly younger siblings. But the idea is that at a space camp, the aliens have some challenges learning our social and emotional skills. I did that in that way so that students who already aren't feeling great, aren't feeling confident about their social and emotional skills will feel a little bit superior because they are being asked to teach these aliens who are not as good as they are <laughs> in practicing social and emotional skills. And in the process, students can learn without losing face about these issues and they can also see, oh, I'm not as bad as the aliens. Then students who are listening to a five minute funny story about the aliens problems at space camp are given two potential options that staff members at camp can take to manage the behavior. These are both common options 
and they're both ineffective. And then in a you choose type format, students are asked to choose one or the other option and then to read ahead to see what happens in the story. And it's funny. The, t the teacher, that would be you, will actually be reading the story aloud. You could also hand the book to a strong reader in your family or your group and have that student read the story, but it's just a five minute story. Then you will turn as teacher to the training manual. I developed a training manual that is in two different formats. There is a secular format that is exactly the same as the faith-based format, except that it uses fables and quotes in addition to the other activities where the faith-based format uses Bible stories and scriptures to teach. The, I want to, I just want to make clear that the Bible-based, the faith-based training manual includes the, the scriptures, but it doesn't dictate to you the format of the story that you read or the version of the Bible that you use. You are free to choose any version that works for you. In addition to all of the other activities, which are discussion, dramatization, uh, practicing the skills, games, there are science and art related activities that fit with the story that is at space camp and they tend to be space camp related activities because that is appealing to kids of all ages and it's really fun. And then I even have ideas for a snack and party ideas that you can use to incorporate into the curriculum to keep it fun and keep kids learning. In addition to that, I am making a video course available where I am teaching kids the practical how-to of the skills in short videos. The videos are around three minutes or less, and it's in a child-friendly way. These videos, though, are also optional for you. I've given you the notes in the training manual so you can look at the steps that I'm going to be teaching, and you can teach them yourself. There shouldn't be anything in here that is going to be objectionable to you. And even if there is, you can review all of the activities and pick and choose from the activities to make it fit your family. I also advise uh, families to read another picture book of your choice on the topic, the skill that we are learning. So that could be a nonfiction picture book, or it could be a story-based picture book. I am giving purchasers access to some suggestions of books that you can choose. But if you have a title at your library at home that you already own and want to use, then we certainly recommend that you do that. We want to make this really easy and fun for you. Each mission that goes along with the story is broken up into three steps, and those steps can be taught on three different days, or you could pick and choose activities to do on one day. So for example, if you wanted to teach it as part of a co-op, you could just pick and choose the activities that you like the most. You can also add activities and teach it on one day. There are 16 lessons in the curriculum. So if you did one per week, that would be a semester's worth. Otherwise, if you did one every other week, that would last for a year. But you can use this curriculum, just pick and choose the activities of your choice and use it in your morning basket time, or you could use it as part of your family devotions. This week, I am launching the curriculum and have made it 20% off. So from April 1st through April 7th, you can find it at fundalearnbooks.com slash shop for 20% off. There you can find a page through of the curriculum and you can also request samples of both the secular and the faith-based curriculum. I am really excited about it and I hope many families can benefit from directly teaching their kids social and emotional skills. 
to find a direct link to the curriculum or to any of the other resources that I have mentioned in this episode, go to homeschoolsanity.com slash social skills. Have a happy homeschool week.